بس كل لي متى ها؟ آه ان شاء الله بس 10 ثواني ان شاء الله تفضل تفضل <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد uh, Brothers, sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Brothers and sisters, uh, this afternoon um, we have another hadith uh, about uh, uh, the purification of the soul or of, our, of our hearts and this is a special dua that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recommended that we make um, when it comes to purifying our hearts and uh, purifying our souls. And um, in uh, one of the Sahaba, uh, Shakal ibn Humayd radiallahu an, he, uh, he came one time to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, again, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, as we, when has uh, we often read these ahadith or when we learn uh, the, uh, the various ayat in the Quran uh, in the context in which they were revealed in uh, really try to imagine that situation you know, uh, pre- uh, pretend for a second or for a moment that you were there and what you were seeing you know in, in terms of the environment in terms of the the worries the attitudes the perspectives the the their orientation and how they were doing things their disposition their character their everything you know to think of as if you were there at that time and what are you picturing and so on so as we go through this hadith you know think of it in that way so this sahabi when he he came to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he's worried he is very worried, and uh, uh, and remember the the Sahaba they uh, they were not living in palaces, uh, they were hardly living in one room homes, and some and some of them were you know as they were known as Ashab al Sufa, they were living right on uh, outside the house of the Prophet وسلم, in that area uh, right beside his house, and and they were known as the poor people, and they had no place to live except in that little spot in the masjid. That's where they were living. So uh, in, in the midst of all of their, you know, their poorness of means and their, they were not well-to-do people in terms of, you know, the, the material things of this world, how they would eat, you know, once a day or once in every two or three days, or they, they would drink water uh, once in every two or three days or once a day sometimes, uh, and so on. It, it, was a, it was a very difficult time. So in the midst of all of this, um, this Sahabi comes to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asks him, he, you know, he, uh, he says, Ataytu Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah's peace and blessing be upon him. And he said, Fakultu, Ya Rasul Allah, a'allimni ta'awudhan ata'awudhu bihi. Teach me a protective dua with which I can supplicate for your refuge, to seek refuge, okay, to seek protection. So teach me a protective dua, a dua that's going to protect me. And by, I can use to, to make dua to you to, to protect me, to seek refuge in you. So then, uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Shakil ibn Humayd radiallahu an he says that he says قال فأخذ بيد أبي كفي he, he took my hand Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says he took my hand فقال and he said قل اللهم إني أعوذ بك من شر سمعي ومن شر بصري ومن شر لساني وَمِنْ شَرِّ قَلْبِي وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَنِي يعني فرجة. So the rough translation of this dua, he said that Rasul وسلم, he took my hand, he grabbed onto my hand, and then he said, Oh Allah, he said to say the following, Ya Allah, 
Allahumma, I ask, I, I ask your refuge in protecting me from the following. I, I seek refuge in you. I seek your refuge from the following things. From number one, from the evil of my hearing. From the evil of my hearing. Number two, from the evil of my sight. Number three, from the evil of my tongue. Number four, from the evil of my heart. And number five, from the evil of my privates, my private parts. This is a hadith that was collected by Tirmidhi and Nasa'i and Abu Dawood and so on. So this dua that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him was a prayer, a dua for protection of the heart. And we'll see how in just a few, a few moments, inshallah. So in this, basically in this whole dua, in this episode, the issue that is being touched upon is that if we want to be successful in the purification of our hearts, in the purification of our souls, we have to make dua. And this dua is, is, is divided into two parts, into guidance and protection. Guidance to know the proper way to do things that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was shown to us by our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to know the way to guidance to understand and have knowledge of the way how to do this and number two to have part of that guidance is to have the drive to do it to have the motivation to do it and then the second part of it is the protection to seek that protection from anything that would shield us from purifying our souls. Protect us from any obstacles in the way, any hurdles in the way. And so this dua in particular is teaching us and what we learn from it is how to protect ourselves from our senses, hearing, seeing, and our hearts and our desires, the desire to talk and the desires of our privates. Brothers and sisters, when we, in seeking protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a dua that we make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the dua, in, in the dua, we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us guidance so we can achieve our goals to get to Jannah and to be successful in this life and the, and the akhirah. And at the same time, we can also ask for protection. Ask Allah for, for protection from anything that will get in the way, that will be displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the essential part of this protection is first off in our du'as, and second, it's essential to us as human beings, just as normal everyday human beings. And I'll explain in just a second, I'll explain in just a second. Brothers and sisters, when we make dua, we are supposed to ask for protection from all those things that get in the way, that take us off the straight path, like our dhunub, our sins, like, uh, uh, like um, anything that is haram, anything uh, that is harmful to us, uh, any... Uh, anything that will lead us to the hellfire, Any, anything that is evil, anything that we get influenced by other people who are doing wrong things, other evildoers, shaitan, the bad qualities that we may have in our characters, all those things. So we seek protection from all of those things so we can draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember when we started this whole process of talking about the purification of the soul, we said it is compo composed of two parts, what we call takhliya and tahliya. Takhliya is to get rid of any undesirable qualities in our hearts. 
like envy and jealousy and sinning and shirk and uh, hypocrisy and greed and shuh and all those things, hatred and anger uh, unnecessarily and so on. So, and then tahliya is to sweeten the pot, so to speak, you know, to, to sweeten our hearts, to adorn our hearts with good qualities like iman and tawakkul and confidence in Allah and reliance on Allah and, uh, uh, and, and putting our hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawakkul, taqwa, uh, and, and f- fearing no one but Allah, loving Allah the most. That's the, the qualities we, which we want to adorn our hearts with. So protection obviously is critical for us in our, to seek protection through our du'as. That is the number one thing. But for us, protection is also in, as humans. As humans, you know, we are often, we are afraid that something's going to hurt us or, you know, especially in the, our material, material world that we often fear, you know, many different things and we take protective measures to help us. There's that need to feel secure, not to be hurt in any way. And, you know, we can see that in our everyday examples. I mean, these days, uh, you know, people are beginning to take the vaccines because of the virus to protect themselves so they won't get sick. People are keeping six feet away from each other to protect themselves, the social distancing. When we drive our cars, we wear the seat belts. When we are at home, we have, the, we have fire alarms and burglar alarms and so on and so forth. Many of us learn the martial arts to protect ourselves. Some of us get weapons to protect ourselves. So there are many different ways. We always feel the need to feel secure. The challenge, brothers and sisters, is that often we place this trust to protect ourselves and material things alone. When in fact, there is something a little bit more difficult to detect in our lives that involves more than the material. Like to protect our iman, to protect our taqwa, to protect our relationship with Allah, to protect our the feeling of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These things we may not think about often because we get distracted. And many people, they use their material things in this world to try to protect themselves for things that are supernatural, things that are not re- readily available to our senses. Like, you know, people wear, wear these amulets and people will believe in the, the different signs in the, in the universe, how the planets align and our zodiac and our astrology signs and so on and so forth. But in the end, we must remember that it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can protect us. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give us security. As human beings, we have two big enemies. We have the shaitan, you know, the the reasons for this feeling so tense and stressed. We have to remember we have two enemies, two big enemies, shaitan and ourselves, ourselves. You see, shaitan is bent upon making us feel rejected and depressed and disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is bent upon messing our way. So we, we don't make it to Jannah. And ourselves, our nafs, it loves the worldly things. Our nafs is attached to the worldly glitter and glamour. It's often very lazy to do the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, the roots of rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are, are in our nafs. We, we often act contrary to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be pleased by. Uh, brothers and sisters, our nature, our nature is one where we can easily feel very proud and arrogant. But we must remember that all the good that we do is from Allah. It's not because of our efforts in any way. It's through Allah's support. 
When you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's when you will feel cared for and protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's when you will feel protected by Allah azza wa jal. Not when you begin to believe in the falsehoods and so on. So the first thing, brothers and sisters, is that you, as you can see in this dua, that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us, is that we're seeking protection. Protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against all these different things, from our hearing, from our sight, from our tongues, from our hearts, and from our privates, from our private parts. Brothers and sisters, as you look at this dua, as you, and you look at the, the context of the hadith, you see that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to us as a messenger from Allah. But not just a messenger, and not only a messenger, but as a teacher, as a teacher. And look at his methodology when it comes to teaching. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. I mean, this is what I mean to look into the hadith and try to fathom the feelings and the emotions that are going on in the hadith. Not just intellectually understand each word and their meanings and okay, I understood the context and so on and so forth and just intellectualize it. No, emotionalize it also. Try to feel it in your heart as well, the whole hadith. So, in, 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 and, and here's what I want to just share with you some reflections, how to emotionalize this hadith and not just to intellectualize it. You see, brothers and sisters, Shakil ibn Humayd, he comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asks him, to teach me a protective dua that, with which I can supplicate to seek refuge. In other words, to seek protection. Now, bearing in mind that these Sahaba were li living very poor lives. So it would make sense by our standards today that he would say, he would ask Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to equip him with a dua that brings food or money or sustenance, or a nice house, and so on. You know, the worldly material things. But he didn't ask for those things. He, he said, he, instead he was worried about the immaterial things. He was worried about things that would affect his heart. And that's what he was asking. He was asking something that would help him to protect his heart. And the teacher, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam understood that. He was very sensitive to the feelings of the people. He's not one of those people that just turned off from the feelings of the people and said, well, I, I don't care about this. I, I, I don't, you know, let them feel whatever they feel. He cared about the people. He cared about his congregation, his flock. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when you, when you hear this, when you see this, you can't help but love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can't help but yearn and long to see him and get the drink from his hand on the Day of Judgment. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sensitive that there was something that was worrying Shakil ibn Humayd radiallahu an. He sensed that. And so he sat him down and he, he, you know, he, he grabbed his hand. Now imagine that he didn't just tell, you know, he didn't just tell him and in, in like, you know, just rattle off the, the dua and say, okay, you're on your way now. No, he took him in emotions that are going back and forth now. Imagine when the greatest man on the face of this earth touches you, grabs your hand and brings, him cl and brings you close to him and sits you down and then has your attention looking you looking eye to eye looking you uh, looking at you from you know face to face eye to eye and his sincere genuine countenance 
looking at yours, looking at, Sh at Shakil ibn Hamid. And then he says, this is what you should say. This is what you should say. Subhanallah. The sensitivity of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And often, you know, some, uh, uh, um, you know, some, you know, the story of uh, one of the Sahaba who was looking for food. He was so hungry, had eaten for three, four days. And uh, right after the Salah, he, he went and he, I remember he, uh, he went and he asked Abu Bakr about an ayah in the Quran, hoping that he will invite him to his house. Abu Bakr just told him the meaning and went on his way. Uh, an. And then, uh, you know, uh, Umar radiallahu an, he went up to Umar radiallahu an and uh, asked him about this ayah in the Quran, hoping that he would take him to his house. But again, Umar just told him the meaning and went off on his way. And then he, <laughs> Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw all of this and he, and he said, I'll tell you the meaning of that ayah, but first come to my house, come, come with me. And eventually he gave him, he knew that he wanted something to eat and drink and he gave him something to eat and drink. And there are a lot more details to that story, but I, I just mean to just summarize the story just to point out the sensitivity of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how sensitive he was to the feelings of people. And this is what is coming out in this hadith right away. So he tells him about this dua to protect his heart. And the first thing he mentions is, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika, say, qul lahumma inni a'udhu bika min shirri sami'i. Say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the evil of my hearing. The evil of my hearing. Now, it is uh, interesting to see how the hearing is mentioned before the sight. How the hearing is mentioned before the sight. Because the hearing as you know, it, it stays longer. When you pass away, the hearing, it stays longer. And the, the hearing, many scholars say, the hearing is, the, the, the hearing is also very important for the knowledge, to get the, to get the knowledge. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to the hearing, the idea is to protect yourself from any evil that you might hear. It could be backbiting, could be gossiping, could be rumor mongering, could be falsehoods, could be things that are false about Islam, could be uh, slander, could be, you know, they could be abuse, could, could be gossip, many things. Many things. The idea is you're asking Allah to protect you from those type of verbiage, those type of statements, those type of talk, types of talks. Why? So you can keep your heart pure. So only pure things go into that heart. Only pure things go into that heart. Brothers and sisters, the idea is to send the remembrance of Allah into that heart. Send the Qur'an into that heart. And not all these things that, that play with your feelings and play with your heart. Uh, brothers and sisters, it could be music. All these things, they distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, ask Allah to protect you from the evil of your hearing. You might hear someone saying something bad about another person. And it's, it's not called for. Especially you, you might hear somebody saying something bad about this scholar or that scholar. Something that you should keep away from. And not listen to those type of things. Uh, Sometimes people revel in listening to curse words because with the, with the excuse that shaitan provides them with that, well, you want to know what other people are saying. You want to be, you know, you want to be knowledgeable about that. But ask yourself, do you really need to be knowledgeable about that? If it's something that you, you really need to know, 
Allah will let you know. But in most cases, it's not worth knowing at all. Then after the hearing, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, and I seek your protection from the evil of my sight. Our sight is the connection to our hearts. Remember that our hearing and our sight, they're both portals to our hearts. They're windows into our hearts. They, they are the ones who bring in all this information for us to process in our hearts. And they corrupt our hearts very quickly. So the eyes are the connection. And you know, the, when it comes to the eyes, there's that lustful look, as you know, that we're supposed to keep our gaze away from the opposite gender. But, but often we don't. The scourge of pornography that is ripping apart so many homes, brothers and sisters, so many of our Muslim couples are getting divorced and separated because one or the other is addicted to pornography. Brothers and sisters, and believe me, it's not just the brothers because often people say, oh, this is just the men. No, it's also the women. It's also the sisters and our children as well. It's ripping apart home, homes, households. Brothers and sisters, that lustful look and you know the, the, the way that you say something. And we'll come to that with the tongue in just a second. It takes you away. It, it, it corrupts, it pollutes your heart. Because you know, once that image that you may see online or that you may see, you may see a, a, a somebody from the opposite gender, once it gets entrenched in your heart, you're always picturing that, unless you actively work to root it out of your mind and out of your heart. Brothers and sisters, often there's that betraying look that is part of the evil of the eye, that is the deception of the eye. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in Surah Al-Ghafir, Surah Al-Ghafir, Surah 40, Ayah 19 says, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنْ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ Allah knows very well the deception of the eye, that betraying eye. That you might lead somebody to think that you really believe in them, but you betray them. And you do that with your eyes. SubhanAllah. That's the evil of the eye that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asking protection from and teaching Shakil ibn Humayn radiallahu anhu. Allah knows the deception of your eye and what the hearts can conceal, what the chests conceal. Surah 40, Ayah 19. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we sneak a peek at something. That's the evil of the eye. That something we're not supposed to look at. Something that may be confidential. Somebody's records, somebody's report card, something personal that they didn't want you to see. You know, you, uh, you know how, how often you have people, uh, uh, you know, looking like you, you, have, you may have your iPhone open and you're checking your text messages and somebody over on, your, on your shoulder looking down at what you're taking a look at or somebody's trying to see what your password is. All that is from the evil of the eye. Uh, brothers and sisters, so, we, so sometimes you might wink at someone. You know, you're sitting in a gathering and somebody walks in and you wink at your friend. You know, you talk to somebody. You know how people talk with their eyes. SubhanAllah. So many of us do that. And, you know, mind you, we call those people Islamically oriented people. Even they do stuff like this. That's the evil of the eye. Sometimes we mock other people with our eyes. We know how we roll our eyes like towards our parents sometimes or towards other people. That's part of that. Or sometimes we pretend that's part of the evil of the eye. Or sometimes you might pretend to see something that you've never really seen and talk about it as if you've seen it. 
that's the evil of the eye. Unless it's something righteous that you're trying to be. Or sometimes we deny something, seeing something that we have seen already. And we pretend as if we haven't seen it, but you have seen it. That's part of the evil of the eye. Or sometimes we look down at someone, literally. You know, we through with our eyes, you know, we'll look away from someone in disgust and disdain. Sometimes we're envious of someone and we look away. Sometimes we read stuff or watch stuff on television, on the internet, or in books, or in magazines, and stuff that we know that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, our eyes get distracted often in the worldly things. Away from the dhikr of Allah, away from the names of Allah, away from the Qur'an, away from Islamic things. And that's a big problem. Because it corrupts our hearts. It takes our hearts away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what he said that Allah tayyib, inna Allah tayyib, la yaqbalu illa tayyiban. Allah is good and accepts nothing but unless it's good. So whatever you bring into your hearts through your eyes has to be good things. Good things. Things that are pleasing to Allah. Brothers and sisters, one time when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, you know, لِكُلِّ ibn Adam," and he said, there are many different narrations of this hadith talking about different parts of the body. He says, لِكُلِّ ibn Adam حَظُّهُ مِنَ الزِّنَا Every child of Adam has his lot, has his portion of fornication or adultery. They have their part. They have their part. And then he went on and he specified. He says, so the zina, the adultery of the eye is the glance, is that look. So when you look at someone that you're not supposed to, the opposite gender. And these days, forgive me for saying this, but even among Muslims, the same gender. To look with that lustful look. That's the zina of the eye. And then he went on, he said, the zina of the tongue is the talk. The talk in the flirtatious way. And, and you know, you, you've heard me say that before, that how, you know, how sometimes we even in the most pious of things we do, we, we flirt. You know, like, like you heard me say that before, and I don't mean to be funny in any way, but this is the reality that, you know, a brother or a sister will go to, the, to another uh, sister, like a brother will go to a sister or a sister will go to a brother and say, Asalaamu Alaikum. Ya Allah, why can't you just say Assalamu Alaikum? in a business way, like the Qur'an instructs. But it, why do you have to say it in a flirtatious way? So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that the tongue, it talks in, in, in a way that is flirtatious, which is its zina. Then the ears, their zina is hearing that stuff, hearing that pornographic material, hearing that X-rated talk, and the hands, they also commit zina by ruthlessly doing the things that are displeasing to Allah in, in that vein. And the, and, and the feet, their zina is walking, taking the body there. And the mouth, its zina is the kiss. And in other narrations, he said that, and the heart is zina, is to long for it, to wish for it. I wish this could happen. I wish this would happen and so on. And to, and to desire it and to covet it. And it is the privates that at the very end, they confirm it or deny it. Brothers and sisters, that's a very serious thing, the eyes. The eyes. You know, you heard the story of, of Imam Shafi'i. Imam Shafi'i, you know, 
Subhanallah, what a giant he was you know, of this ummah. He was walking through the marketplace. He normally did not frequent the marketplace. He did not go to the mall or the, you know, the marketplace, the souq. He didn't go there because of all the fitna that used to be there. So he went only when it was absolutely necessary. So he went to pick up something for, for to eat. And he, his eyes, he was looking down to keep, uh, uh, you know, to keep his gaze away from any, uh, you know, from the opposite gender, not to see any woman, despite the fact that the women were covered, mind you, they were wearing all, they were all wearing hijab and so on. But he did not want to look at a, at a woman to, to distract him. He was, at this time, he was not married. So he didn't want to look. So, and, and mind you, a lot of those women at that time, if not most of them, they used to wear the niqab. So he's going through the marketplace and he, he's keeping his uh, gaze down. And he, his, his gaze comes upon the ankle of a woman. Ankle, ankle, not the face, ankle, part of an ankle of a woman. And so that day, it was just a passing glance and he looked away. That day, he went back to do his studies. And he couldn't memorize like he used to memorize. You know, Imam al-Shafi'i, his memory was phenomenal. That he had a photographic memory. That if he would be reading a page, uh, you know, if he, would, if he would be reading a book, he would cover one side of the page so he can read the other side, so it wouldn't get mixed up. Then he would read this side of the page one time and it would be in his memory. Then he would uncover the other side and then he would read it and then that would be in his memory. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. That day when he went back to study, he couldn't memorize. He was having trouble memorizing. So he went to his sheikh, his teacher. His name was Wakir. He went to him and he told him, look, I'm having trouble memorizing. And so his sheikh told him, that look, you know, you have to understand. And he told him in poetry, which I'll just translate briefly. He told him that, look, the light of Allah is not given to a, sin, a sinful person. So what you have to concentrate on is leaving your sins. And once as you leave your sins, the, nur, the, the light of Allah will come to you. And remember, the light of Allah is not given to a disobedient servant. He's telling that to Shafi, subhanAllah, just because of that glance. Now imagine these days, it's not just an ankle that you see, it's a lot more. And then you wonder, subhanAllah, why can't I memorize the Quran? Why am I having so much trouble? Why am I having trouble uh, memorizing hadith? Why am I having uh, trouble memorizing words in Arabic? Because the heart is not clean. The heart has not been purified, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, the tongue is the next part of the body. You see that most of our sins, perhaps they're related to the tongue of what we say. There's a lot of evil there as well. The lying that goes on, the gossip, you know, by the tongue. The gossip, the cursing, the abuse, the rumor mongering, the vulgarity. All these things, they go on. The backbiting, the insulting. All this is by the tongue. Divulging other people's secrets. You know, tell, somebody tells you, don't, don't, you know, I'm, I'm telling you something, don't tell anyone. And the next thing you do is you go into, you tell somebody else that, look, I'm going to tell you something, don't tell anyone. And, but, and, and, and you think that nobody knows in the community, but everybody in the community knows that secret. The one that you said, don't tell anyone. That's how it is. We have to face the facts. That's the evil of the tongue. sherri lisani. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa is teaching him to seek protection for, from the evil of his tongue. Brothers and sisters, to ridicule someone, that's one of the evils of the tongue. 
to make a statement of disbelief. You know, to say something like, ah, the Halloween, ah, come on, there's nothing wrong with Halloween. I mean, it's just a fun thing. There, you know, there's nothing against, there's nothing against Allah in that. Or to come around and say that, look, the way that the Muslims govern, you know, the, the, the Islamic way, it's, this is the 21st century. Come on, it, it doesn't apply anymore. That's not the way that we're supposed to govern by shura. Come on, we live in a modern everyday world, modern, you know, 21st century world. And, you know, we should do it according to this system and that system and this system and that system. Forget about the Quran and Sunnah. It doesn't apply anymore. That's a statement of kufr. Or somebody makes a statement of disobedience. I don't see one ayah in the Quran which says that you should wear the hijab. That's a statement of disobedience. When they know there is something there already and somebody's already told them, but you're denying it. That's a statement of disobedience. I don't believe we should pray. You know, you can just pray in your heart. God knows what's in my heart. Statement of disobedience. That's the evil of the tongue. Or if you say something that demoralizes other Muslims, Oh, the Muslims, uh, they will never succeed. Oh, come on. You know, we're, you know, you have to be practical. You have to be realistic. You have to be modern. Islam is just, it takes you backwards, you know, come on. When you start demoralizing, and by, and in addition to the fact that this could be a statement of kufr as well, but statement of disbelief, but when you demoralize the Muslims, oh, Islam will never succeed. Come on, Islamic schools, ah, it's never going to work. You know, they, you're always going to be crying out for money. You're never going to have a gymnasium. You're never going to have this and that and this and that. When you demoralize the Muslims, that's part of the evil of the tongue. That's part of the evil of the tongue. When you act hypocritically, you believe one thing, but you say something totally opposite. That's the evil of the tongue. When you exaggerate things, make things bigger than they are or smaller than they, they, were, than they are, that's, that's the, from the evil of the tongue. When you fail to speak the truth, that's part of the evil of the tongue. When you fail to enjoin what is right and forbid what is evil, that is part of the evil of the tongue. When you get involved in unnecessary arguments, because as Muslims, we don't argue, we discuss respectfully. We don't go back and forth and personalize the, our, the discussion and attack people personally. That's not us as Muslims. We're all about nasiha, not nasiha to give advice and to take advice. Brothers and sisters, that is the tongue. And the tongue has to be busy in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and reading the Qur'an and, and, and learning more about Islam. Then you come to the heart. He says, I seek protection from the evil of my heart. Min sharri qalbi. You see, the heart is the house of Iman. It can be. Or it can be the playground of the shayateen. It can be the playground of the devils. You see, the two big things in the heart, the two big things in the heart are the shahawat and the shubuhat. The shahawat are the desires. And the, and the shubuhat are the doubts. They affect the hearts deeply. The, the carnal desires, the vain desires of this world, they play a big role in corrupting the heart. The desires. And the doubts, the doubts about Islam, the doubts about the Quran, the doubts about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the doubts about Allah, all these things the, shayt the shaitan brings. That's the evil of the heart, the disbelief, the hypocrisy, the disobedience, the disrespect of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. These are all diseases of the heart that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asking to seek protection from the evil 
of the heart. The envy, the jealousy, the hatred. All of those things. The greed, the arrogance, the evil of the heart. Then the evil of the privates. Adultery, fornication, the desire for the opposite gender, to do things that, that, are, are, uh, that are forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a scourge that is affecting many of our youth today. And forgive me for saying this, but for, this, for the sake of clarity, the whole scourge of masturbation. This is from the privates. And some of the scholars, they say that this even applies to children, that bad children, children that to seek Allah's protection from the evil of their children. Brothers and sisters, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa advised us to seek protection from all these things. And the biggest way you can seek this protection in making this dua and in getting involved in doing the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the work of Islam. This is why we so badly need a community. We so badly need to socialize. You see, when the man came up to a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grabbed his hands, brought him close, look, sat, you know, looked at him eye to eye. Now imagine this man would remember this for the rest of his life. For the rest of his life, that teaching moment that a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used and how sensitive he was to other people's feelings. It's difficult to get that type of a reaction virtually. This is why for us as Muslims, yes, there are a lot of people who are saying that we should have an online school. And inshallah, we, we will try to have one, but we still need to have a school on campus. The tarbiyah cannot be done just virtually. The tarbiyah, the upbringing of the children has to be done by hands-on, face-to-face, meeting with each other seeing the expressions of each other, having feelings for each other, all of those things. We need to be able to embrace each other, to hug each other, to shake hands with each other, to help each other physically. Brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to protect ourselves from our hearing from our sight, from our tongues, from the evil of our hearing, evil of our sight, evil of our tongues, and the evil of our hearts, and the evil of our privates. Brothers and sisters, I end with this hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa wherein Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Allah, inna Allah ta'ala yaqul, Allah most definitely has said the following, most exalted. He said the following. Yabna Adam, tafarrag li ibadati. Amla qalbaka ghinan. Wa asud the faqrak. O child of Adam, focus and dedicate and devote yourself to my worship to serving me. And I, in return, will place, I'll fill your heart with contentedness. You'll never feel as if you're needy. You'll always be content. And I'll take care of your neediness. You'll never feel needy in anything. I'll take care of it. Wa illa taf'al and if you don't do it, if you don't focus on serving me, on doing my work, on worshiping me, then I will fill your hands with busyness, with preoccupation. You'll always be busy. You never have time for me, for Allah. You never have time for Islam. 
وَلَمْ أَسُدَّ فَقْرَكَ And I will not take care of your neediness. You'll always feel needy. You never have enough. You'll never be satisfied. Brothers and sisters, may Allah help us to protect ourselves from the evil of our hearing, the evil of our sight, the evil of our tongues, the evil of our hearts, and the evil of our privates. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for listening. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.